Uh, prescribed burning is the, the controlled use of fire to manage habitats. The benefits of prescribed burning uh, primarily are to maintain wildlife habitat in natural systems. What happens uh, with the lack of prescribed burning in most of these habitats, you get an excessive buildup of fuels and also you'll get a lot of uh, hardwood and, and brushy understory buildup, which ends up resulting in a reduced quality wildlife habitat and at the same time an increased risk of a damaging wildfire if one does occur. We use prescribed burning in upland habitats primarily uh, because they're the most readily uh, able to be burned. Uh, typically we use uh, burning in uh, sand hills that are dominated by things like wiregrass and longleaf pines. Use them on clay hills where we have mixed pines and hardwoods. And we also use prescribed fire in flatwoods types of cover and to a lesser extent in scrub habitat and also in freshwater marshes and saltwater marshes. You put fire on the ground and you do it in a controlled manner based on your prescription. Uh, the prescription is a written plan that must be in place if you're to be covered uh, from a liability standpoint and it just makes the fire a lot easier for you to control if you'll stay within that prescription. The primary parameters that we look at are, are things like temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, and wind direction. There are several types of firing techniques that we use. The two primary types that most people are familiar with are the uh, backing fire and the heading fire. A backing fire is generally a cooler type fire that backs against the wind, it moves at a slower pace, and consumes uh, more fuel overall. A heading fire, on the other hand, runs with the wind and is generally a more intense fire, but uh, backing fires are generally used where you're trying to do more control of uh, hardwood sprouts. Heading fires are used in situations where you have a, a higher canopy and larger acreages and where you can safely burn using a heading fire, and also in situations where you have young longleaf pines where the fire can sweep over the top of the young pines without uh, causing the damage to the, to the bud on the young pines. Dormant season fires um, are generally less intense than growing season fires. A fire is considered a dormant season fire uh, if the understory is not actively growing. So generally in the winter or early spring. Uh, those burns are used in areas where there's never been any burning done before to get a handle on fuel loading. Growing season burns are generally used in areas that have had at least one or two dormant season burns on them prior to the growing season burn. And they are more beneficial overall to wildlife habitat because they have a greater impact on reducing understory shrubs and also for promoting uh, seed production and growth in native ground cover plants. Common tools used include things like shovels, council rakes, uh, drip torches, ATVs, uh, and any kind of uh, uh, sprayers, ATV mounted sprayers or backpack sprayers for uh, controlling fire on fire lines. It's recommended that landowners use uh, the proper uh, personal protective equipment and that includes things like a helmet and a face shield or goggles and then uh, Nomex or fire retardant clothing and leather boots and leather gloves. Uh, hiring a contractor is the recommended way to go uh, if you don't have any experience, prior experience burning. The contractors can, uh, can typically burn uh, property from anywhere from uh, $20 to $30 an acre. There are risks to prescribed burning, but if you follow a written prescription, hire a contractor that's qualified to burn and certified by the state, uh, your risks are minimized and the benefits that you'll gain from that burn will be tremendous. The response that you get from prescribed burning on native habitats is you get a, a flush of growth of grass species such as wiregrass, Indian grass, different blue stem grasses, uh, just lots of native grasses and wildflowers that grow back in response to the reduction in the hardwood brush and the increase in the openness, openness of the stand uh, that allows those, those ground covers to grow. And those ground covers are what provide most of the burn fuel and also subsequently the forage and seed for lots of wildlife species. For more information on 
prescribed burning and other wildlife habitat management practices, visit our website at myfwc.com LAP. Call a FWC regional office and ask for a private lands biologist or contact your local division of forestry office.